What's going on, everybody? It's your boy AD, and I'm here to do the raw review for June 26, 2023. I'm sorry I'm a bit late for this. It's Thursday, but better late than never, you know. And then we got SmackDown tomorrow, and we got the Money in the Bank pay-per-view coming up very soon. So, let's get into it. The highlight for the night was Cody Rhodes triumphs over Damian Priest en route to WWE Money in the Bank. I know it's like, wow, that's what Cody is doing now. You know, you never went back to Rome and Brock somehow disappeared. And now you're just fighting Judgment Day and, and Dominic. Like, man, they know they could be doing better for Cody and still got a messed up arm. But let's get into it because uh, a lot of things happen. But I'm not saying I'm gonna tell you what I think about it soon. Says prior to his showdown against Dominic Mysterio at Money in the Bank, Cody Rose recited some Dr. Seuss for his opponent and called him a scared little boy. And yeah, I think he came out. Like when this first happened, I felt it. I was like, why do I feel like this is finna be a complete waste of time? I'm like, watch this not be a fight or brawl. Come on, this is Dominic he's fighting. I'm so tired of Dominic and Rhea. It's, it's annoying watching this weak dude who obviously can't really wrestle like that and isn't that good. It's annoying him watching Rhea study jumping in between his business instead of her actually having a, some, a good title run and doing something. Rhea just sticks in Dominic and Judgment Day business all day and just keeps standing in front of dudes and cheating for him. That's annoying. It's really annoying. I, I, I don't really like it. And and this is what happened. Came out, wasted time. Nobody got beat up. What Rhea stood in the way. Just goofiness. Nothing happened. This is just ended up setting up a match later against Damien. Then we had Ricochet defeating Shinsuke Nakamura. I mean, I like Shinsuke. I like Ricochet. But, I mean, this is a throwaway match. Like I said before, this is some laziness, honestly, by Triple H. Like, all these guys are already in money and bank. Why are you making them fight all each other? You know, if you, again, no bill. Like, they're all going to money in the bank. So this match really doesn't mean anything. It's a throwaway match, right? It doesn't matter who wins or who loses. Instead of putting them in, he, you see he not doing it with just them, but you see instead of putting them in something different, maybe building them, doing something, nah, let's just keep having y'all just fight each other even though y'all all will be fighting each other in the pay-per-view. Yeah, waste of time. Bronson, we read, I think, got ejected. I mean, it was still cool. Ricochet is still, like, dope as hell, but still, throwaway match. Um, then we had Ronda Rousey defeat Raquel Rodriguez. Nothing really special here. Another kind of throwaway match. I mean, I mean Ronda and Raquel. I guess it's like okay, like okay, like it's a singles or whatever. But I mean, Liv is back, and I feel like Raquel just went right back to square one in this tag run. Like I really thought they was gonna do a singles run, and that and Oak still keep her in the tag. And how in the world do they end up going for the tag titles? Like, uh, it's like, here go, where there's, like, no work or no build for people to get titles. Here go, Raquel and Liv finna have a tag title shot just literally out of nowhere. Literally. Yeah, Raquel lost, though. R Ronda beat her, which is kind of predictable. Um, world heavyweight champion Seth freaking Rollins engaged in a brutal brawl with Finn Balor and Root to WWE Money in the Bank with the help of NXT champion Carmelo Hayes. This is just not good. Uh, I, I'm not liking this whole Seth Rollins, Finn Balor feud. It's just nothing really big to me or exciting to me. It, it honestly isn't. And to see them just go at it, even that wasn't really that intense. And Carmelo took the chair from, um, Finn, it's like, okay, man, wow, I'm helping them. Don't know why, but yeah, boring. Then the Miz launched a sneak attack on Tomasa Champer prior to their Raw rematch. Now, this was a little something to me. I know some people might say this was boring, but I, I actually kind of like this. It's kind of sad because, you know, he got to attack his old partner. That was like his old partner. You know, that's the sad part. But, man, I like this version of Miz, though. I like the brutal Miz, the do your dirty Miz, the Miz that gets what he wants. You know, he came from behind him, hit him with the face crusher, finished it like, pow. And he looked like he just ended his whole life. And I'm like, thank you, because the Miz don't get nothing nothing this dude really just been jobbing out for months now so this part i actually liked with the miz then we had dominic going against akira tozawa and 
I mean, let's be honest, Dominic is weak because Akira Tozawa was actually getting the better of him in this fight, yo. Like, for real, if you go watch this match, watch how Akira Tozawa actually gets the best of Dominic. The only reason why Dominic won this match is because of a of a um, distraction from Rhea. But it was a little different this time around, though. Instead of Rhea doing what she normally do, sneaking up on people, hitting people from behind and all of that extra stuff. Instead, this time, she got in fact, like, it's like Akira Tozawa kind of just noticed her and then got infatuated with her. And it was crazy because I heard Michael Cole earlier say, well, you're like one of these Rhea Ripley simps. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, Rhea Ripley simps. I'm surprised they even said that. Now they're calling out Rhea Ripley simps. And then all of a sudden, Akira Tozawa acts infatuated by her like a simp. I should put that in the title. But, um, yeah, so that's what happened. So from what it looks like to me, Akira Tozawa has a crush on Rhea. And that might lead into something. And, and it just distracted them. You know, it gave uh, Dominic a chance to knock him off the top rope. Like, uh, like that's my girl. Knocked them off the top rope, and then he hit them with the frost splash and won. But it's just ridiculous, right? Like, this is just so ridiculous. Dominic should not be winning none of these matches. And it's like, what is the point? All you're doing is making real look like the strong one and the good one. Just think about this. Dom I mean, that, if anything, that makes Dominic look weak as hell. Like, I know people will say, oh, he's a heel, and, and he gets heat. Yeah, he gets heat. But he's a weak-ass heel, though. Like, a strong heel is better. Like, you, uh, you're you literally getting outdone by a woman, and we're supposed to, like, consider you to be a tough guy? No. You know what I'm saying? This man, when Rhea Ripley won the title uh, recently, this man jumped in her arms. You know what I'm saying? Akira Tozawa, who's, like, one of the smallest guys on the roster. He's got to be the smallest right was giving it to you was giving it to you now dominic is kind of tall but he really kind of lanky though right like dominic really ain't really big or built he kind of skinny honestly you know like you got height though he do got height but akira tozawa was giving it to him and let's not forget, Akira had a match with Rhea. They actually fought, which means that Akira had felt her up. Now, wouldn't that be crazy if Rhea just said F it and went and got Akira? And let's also not forget, Akira Tozawa had a relationship with Tamina, which was like the same thing. Because Tamina was like a bigger, taller woman, kind of like Rhea. Don't, don't, don't. But let's move on. Um... The Money in the Bank Ladder Match Summit resulted in all-out chaos between Becky Lynch, Trish Stratus, Zoe Stark, Bailey, EO, Sky, and Zelina. Yeah, they just basically had them have an all-out brawl to, you know, hype up Money in the Bank. And the who ended up actually getting a, the upper hand at the end was Becky. Do I think Becky is going to win this, though? Nah, I'm kind of leaning towards Zoe Stark. Damn, Zoe is in there with Trish? Ooh, somebody might turn on somebody. And it might be Zoe on Trish. Mm-hmm. Then we had Gunther defeating Sami Zayn. And this is like, uh, like why, again, why Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens fighting Gunther? That is so dumb. You have the tag team champions fighting your IC champion. And your IC champion has a tag team behind him. This is ridiculous, and both of y'all, it's wasting both of y'all time because Gunther should be doing something with his IC belt or singles, not against the tag teams. Y'all should be building tag teams. Mighty Strange, when the Usos had the belt, they were pretty much tag teams all day, and they kept going. Look at y'all having singles now. But you know that ain't doing nothing but signaling the breakup of Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, which we know is coming soon. It is coming soon because they're clearly not on the same page. And I don't know why they keep trying Gunther, man. Gunther is a beast. Like, I don't know why they keep thinking they could beat Gunther because, as you can see, neither one of them beat him. But then bro came out with a with a crutch and a broke foot that he took from Giovanni. And then he came out and beat up the whole Imperium. And that was whack. That was whack. Because you supposed to have a messed up foot. I, I, that, I hear it go where people just get extremely overpowered for no reason. 
Like, dude, your foot was messed up. There is no way in the world he should have been able to take all three of them out. Even with a crutch, he shouldn't have been able to take. He, If his foot was messed up the way he was trying to do, he couldn't have did half the stuff he did when he came out there. You know, it's like, oh, my foot hurt, hurt, but now magically I can do a jump and knee strike. Oh, my foot hurt, but magically I can still get down to the ring pretty quickly and get up in time and still attack everybody in the ring with a crutch. And they all just run. Well, but I got a hurt foot. Yeah, that was that was ridiculous. Finn Balor defeats Carmelo Hayes. A very predictable, goofy match. It's like, why is Carmelo Hayes in here fighting Finn Balor? Just like, with, uh, it's like, here it go. It's like Carmelo is an NXT champion, but y'all ain't doing nothing but making him look stupid. You know, you send Corbin to NXT to beat him up and try to job him out, a jobber. That's, tall, that's a downgrade. Then you send him here. And then you make him help Seth, but nobody gives him help. And now Finn just beat you on his way to Seth. You know, you helped Seth, but Seth didn't help you here. And Finn just, and and, and this is so predictable because we know he's going to fight Finn. So obviously Carmelo was not going to win. But this is your NXT champion. Hmm. Not a good way to make him look good or strong. And a terrible way to try to make Finn look better because it doesn't really matter because we know Seth is going to beat Finn. So it don't matter if Finn come out demon, whatever. Seth is going to beat him. It's pretty predictable and obvious. And last but not least, we had Cody Rhodes defeating Damian Priest. I mean, the match was kind of interesting. You know, I like Cody, man. Still ridiculous what they're doing with him and him having his arm still messed up with no Brock even being there. Um, he still had to deal with Dominic and Rhea, and that was annoying cause, because when Seth was fighting him, Seth didn't have to deal with him. So it shows you how Seth gets all protected, but Cody doesn't. Cody obviously has the shit in the stick when it comes to the storylines and what's going on. It's clear as day. But, um, yeah, so, and main event, Cody wins. He he did win through all the odds, though. He did. I felt like this was some Bianca Belair stuff. Like, remember when Bianca used to have to fight the whole damage control with no help and still win? That's how this was. Cody pretty much had to fight the whole Judgment Day by himself and still won. It's still ridiculous, though. And that was it. If I had to rate this show, this show really wasn't that great. The only part I really, really, really liked was the men's part. I give the, eh, I guess the little women's bra was okay. Ah, uh, not too good. I don't really want to give it. The ricochet match was good. Okay, I give y'all a two, a two out of five. Still not that great though. So I hope y'all enjoyed this one, guys, and take care. And I will see you guys later. Peace.